Well, you're watching Press TV's News Review, where we look deeper into some of the top stories of the day. On this segment of the program, Russia says it has launched a series of massive retaliatory military strikes against Ukraine. Today, the armed forces of the Russian Federation launched a massive strike with high-precision, long-range air, sea, ground-based weapons and unmanned aerial vehicles against energy facilities, the military-industrial complex, railway junctions, arsenals, places of deployment of Ukrainian armed forces and foreign mercenaries. The Russian Defense Ministry said the strikes were in response to Ukrainian shelling of uh, Russian border regions and attempts to break through and see settlements over recent weeks. It stressed that all goals of uh, the strike had been achieved. The ministry said those included destroying military equipment delivered to Ukraine from NATO countries and disrupting the transfer of reserve forces to the front line. Kiev says five people were killed and 14 injured in the largest Russian aerial attack to target it in recent months. Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have uh, Chair of UN Affairs of Ukrainian World Congress, Mr. Andrei Dobryansky, joining us from New York. Also, we have former CIA analyst Larry Johnson joining us from Bradenton, Florida. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, let's start off with Mr. Dobryansky in New York. Uh, sir, give us uh, your perspective and breakdown of, uh, of the recent events as you see it. Well, just to counter the uh, uh, statements being made by Moscow. Uh, many of the facilities that were hit were civilian. Uh, there was no retaliation because if you're aiming a missile at a trolley, uh, hospitals, other civilian locations, as well as the largest hydroelectric plant uh, following the destruction of the Kokoka plant last summer, uh, clearly these are civilian targets. Yet another uh, a number of items that will be added to the war crimes case against Russia at the ICJ. Uh, so that's the, the factual uh, uh, method. What's happening in Russia, however, is primarily being done by Russian citizens against the Russian government. And we just got a report today that the largest donations for uh, Ukraine's drone army uh, came from Russia during the period of the uh, Russian election. So there are actually Russians who are uh, sending aid to Ukraine to help liberate their own country. Uh, Mr. Larry Johnson, uh, I want to get your assessment as well, and also if you may respond to Mr. Dobryansky in New York. What, what he's saying are lies, complete, utter lies. Where's the video? Show us the videotape out of Kiev of all of the civilian areas hit. You can't because that's not what happened. In contrast, though, the ample video evidence of the Ukrainians sending missiles into Belgorod and drones into Belgorod hitting purely civilian targets. The fact of the matter is there are a significant number of Western mercenaries. Ukraine's being kept alive because of a flow of NATO weapons and Russia is appropriately hitting and targeting those areas throughout. You know, if, you, if, if Russia was really hitting civilian targets, you would see the images coming out of, uh, of the Lviv area, out of the base at Yavari, but they're not showing that. And, you know, Ukraine continues to lie about, oh, we shot down most of the missiles coming in. No, they didn't, because if they did, they wouldn't be complaining about, oh, the Russians have hit all these civilian areas. The reality is this, Ukraine's losing, it has lost the war, it's a dead man walking, it just doesn't want to acknowledge that fact. Uh, all right, Mr. Dormiansky, uh, I'm going to allow you to uh, respond uh, to Mr. Johnson, but also, uh, if you may, looking at this from another perspective, uh, how do you see this war wrapping up? Is this constant military support that NATO countries uh, are, are giving to Ukraine, is that going to help or is that just going to uh, uh, edge this away from uh, reaching a, a peaceful negotiated settlement to this war? It is, in fact, uh, countries that are both within NATO and not in NATO who are um, allied with Ukraine and supplying Ukraine. So it is a much broader coalition than just NATO. Uh, and uh, we will see, uh, in terms of 
your, your question about the end of the war. We will see what happens as the proposed location of Switzerland and just uh, over the last 24 hours. We know that Turkey has pledged that they will take part in these proposed peace talks, uh, the beginning of which will happen without Russia's participation, but so that a plan can be put together with international partners about what they would like to see. Uh, and then following that, uh, hopefully in the fall, we would have some bilateral talks or uh, maybe some moderated talks with international interlocutors between Ukraine and whatever state comes out of what used to be Russia as it will eventually fall apart. Uh, in terms of what's happening in Ukraine, quickly responding, if anybody wants to uh, go online to uh, either United24, which has plenty of video evidence, or any of the regional and state uh, uh, administrations across Ukraine, that includes Khmelnytsky, Dnipro, and Zaporizhia, you can clearly see all the damage from last night, the civilian buildings, including the 21-year-old woman who had to be dug out from underneath the rubble, or the five-year-old and, uh, and his father who were killed in the missile attack last night. Larry Johnson, same question to you uh, as well with regards uh, to the um, uh, Western countries' uh, support and Western allies' support to, uh, to Ukraine. Is this helping the war uh, to just sustain, or um, do you think that there are other avenues that should be uh, explored to, to try and bring a negotiated settlement to this conflict? Well, it's facilitating the death of more Ukrainians. Ukraine does not have the military capability right now to fight in the state and run. In fact, neither does NATO. Uh, it, it, you know, what, this, what this now two-year-plus war has exposed is the complete weakness of the NATO forces. They can't even, all of the United States and, and Europeans combined cannot produce the number of artillery shells that the Russians are cranking out. And with respect to negotiations, it's got to start with Vladimir Volodymyr Zelensky repealing the, the law that uh, he imposed or his di dictate that uh, it's illegal to hold any kind of negotiations with the Russians, number one. Number two, the West has already tanked, torpedoed uh, negotiations going back to March of 2022 when there was a tentative agreement on the table according to Ukrainian negotiators as well as other foreign observers that were involved with the process. It was the United States and Great Britain that intervened directly and or ordered Zelensky not to go forward with it, which he complied. So the, the West has, you know, the, the West is only getting interested now in negotiated settlement because they're losing. They're, they're getting defeated across the board. The, you know, it'd be one thing if you're seeing a rush of uh, artillery shells coming into Ukraine, but you're not. Uh, new air defense systems, not, a, not a happening. Uh, the, the air, whatever exists and remains of the Air Force of Ukraine has been decimated. So. Uh, and the West is in no position to provide any kind of significant troop presence to make any significant difference on the battlefield. Ukraine is, is, as I said at the outset, they're a dead man walking, just like you can cut a chicken's head off and it can run around for a while before it falls over. That's the situation Ukraine is in right now. All right, uh, that's all the time we have for this segment of the program. Uh, allow me to thank my guest, uh, Mr. Larry Johnson, former CIA analyst, joining us from Bradenton, Florida. And thanks to Mr. Andre Dobryansky, uh, chair of UN Affairs Ukrainian World Congress, joining us from New York. And uh, that's a wrap for this edition of uh, the News Review. But stick around, we've got plenty more to come here on Press TV.